Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll here in Nashville, Tennessee. Honored to be with you on the Plugin Alliance channel today to talk about something that I'm really passionate about, and that is analog consoles. Now, some of you may recognize this face from a console-based uh, video that we did on the Plugin Alliance channel a couple years ago. Uh, we did one specifically for SSL, and then another that looked at various Neves, Focusrite. Uh, we we included the SSLs. Uh, but, you know, whatever console strips that Plugin Alliance had available at that time. Um, luckily, that we had great response to that video. And since then, we've had a lot of requests to kind of update it a little bit to include some of these new funds channel strips that have came out in the last couple of years. So that's what we are going to do today. Now, anybody that knows me knows I'm a big channel strip fan. I, 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 I love large format analog consoles. I love working on them. I love mixing on them. I love everything about them. Why? Why do I like that? Is because they are all unique and different. And, and, and we can take those tones from a Neve, those tones from an SSL, those tones from a Heliosa, an API, whatever, and, and either process a whole mix to create that type of vibe or put those here and there within our mixes to create that kind of a vibe on that specific instrument. We, we can really scatter it around. Maybe we want largely a Neve thing, but we want Helios on these and an API on these, SSL on these. And so what I thought we would do, let's focus on just the Lindell stuff. So we have the 80 series Neve from 1970. We have the API, which is the 50 series, which goes back to the late 60s and the 70s. And of course, they're still making them today. And then the Helios, which came out in 1969. So we're, we're talking about some vintage analog goodness. Transformers, uh, inductor-based EQs, I mean, fun, fun, rich, tone-rich circuits, nothing sterile allowed. <laughs> Every one of these have flavor and punch and depth and richness. And um, with all that said, let's listen today's, uh, to today's subject. This is my friend Kaylee Bishop. Uh, Kaylee was on The Voice. If you recognize that voice, uh, that, that may be where you recognize her from. She's an amazing singer. And I had this multi-track pulled up anyway because a friend uh, was asking me about doing a tutorial on something swampy. And I thought, swampy? But, you know, when you hear the track, you will you will get it. So here's the track in its raw, raw form as recorded. I don't have any vocals on there, but you'll hear most of the instrumentation, Okay. So we have drums, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, electrics, and B3. And I thought that would be a great way to showcase um, what just the differences in these various consoles. So the top strip is all Lindell 69s, which comes from 1969, the Helios uh, desks, which were amazing. I mean, transformer based. I've never got to work on a real one, just select outboard units. And, and they're very special. Um, the, 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 the transformer based EQ has a sound, which right here on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see all the Lindell circuits, all three of these plugins have a preamp built into them. So we can drive more of that harmonic flavor into it, uh, which is really, really great. And you see the THD knob, we can drive that up to get more of, of that signature, that, that sonic footprint of that harmonic distortion. We can drive it to get even more than the console itself, you know, could give us. So that's a lot of fun. So we can really mix uh, nasty if we want to. And then again, you can turn that THD way down and, and have it even cleaner if you want. Uh, and all, But one cool thing, and you'll see here's the, the uh, EQ module. Desks, uh, they had limited bands. The, the EQs were limited, but they were highly musical, very colored, very rich analog sounding circuits. That's why we still want them today, even though there's more... Um, flexible, we'll call them circuits on the market, or even plugins that are extremely flexible and versatile. Uh, many of them are just vanilla. And when you pass signal through these, you do not get vanilla. What comes out on the other side is is very colored. Now, in, in row number two, we have the uh, Lindell 50, which is based on an API. Uh, again, late 60s, 70s, shoot, they still make this stuff. And, and I, I, I own some of it, and I love it. Uh, and it's known for, it's transformer-based as well, but the op amp, that's in it is kind of the price of admission. That's kind of what makes it punchy and tight and focused. And uh, it's a very different sound uh, than every other module that we will test today, which leads me to number three, the third row here, which is the, the Neve uh, style. This is the Lindell 80. 
And same deal. You see here we have the console um, preamp, which drives into our EQ. And again, a very limited EQ, but a very cool EQ. Uh, just a very, just a great sonic sounding um, piece of equipment. And then our dynamics. So all three of them are the same in the way they are laid out, but the differences are vast, as you will hear. So one last thing. These are all feeding into a stereo bus, which also has the preamp built onto it. So we're getting one last little stage of subtle harmonic coloration from the preamps, okay? All these are feeding into just a couple dB of compression here and just a couple dB of minor EQ work, uh, which is the, the way most of us mix, right? We kind of feed into a um, something like a Pultec or a Better Maker or something like that. So that's what you're gonna be hearing. So what I want to do, I'm going to go up here to the guitar solo, which is really cool. It's a really great guitar solo. And I want to push play with just the raw tracks engaged. And then um, after just a little bit of time passes, I'm going to flip on the Lindell 69. And we're going to hear this guy in action. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, <laughs> that was awesome. Now, I should say, when I pulled these tracks up this morning, I dialed in the sounds with the 69. So when we switch to the different consoles, they have settings that match this. But as you know, you're going to hear that they're very sonically different, but they may not sound quite as song appropriate because this one was the one I started with out of just pure excitement. Okay, so now let's do that one more time, and then let's talk about what we heard, Okay. Okay, my thoughts, the words that come to me, thick, fat, with a pH, <laughs> rich, and with a controlled high end. Is that what you guys get? That's what I get. Um, I love it. It's just, it, it, I don't want to say elegant, but it, it, it just, everything that passes through it is better. Um, it, 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 I'm, I am boosting the top end, but it's not. It's not harsh, it's not brittle, it's not digital sounding whatsoever. It's very, very rich analog sounding. Now I want to talk about the 50 series. So I'm going to let just a little bit of uh, sound pass raw, and then we're going to switch to the 50 series. Here we go. Okay, the high end jumps, right? The, the, the high end is a very different thing on an API than it was on the Helios. But also, did you hear, it's focused. So where we are boosting our EQs, I mean, it's boosted. So it, it, it has a lot, more, a lot more push into that. If we're pushing 8 dB at 6K or whatever we're doing, like it's in your face. It's like, hey, I am 8 dB at 6K. Where at the Helios, it was a lot more round. It was great, but it was round. On this, it's very punchy, very focused and in your face, uh, but it's lean sounding. Listen to the, the leanness of it. So not only do certain things pop and jump, but I feel like the things that were, uh, that were not boosting um, are, are kind of tighten up in a lean way. Let's do that one more time. Man, the, the the attack on the snare drum is not even the same animal, is it? That that's that's the cool thing. I I try to get you know convince people that they need to listen to all these analog circuits and use them heavily in their mixing because they're monsters and they all have such a unique tone. That why do you know? I don't want digital vanilla across my mixes. I want this. I want I want emulations of transformers and tubes and various things that's going to be really colorful and make things pop and snap. I don't want just to boost 6K. I want to boost 6K in a way that has that means something, right? I mean, it's punching me in the mouth. Whatever it's going to do, it's going to do, and it's going to be different than any other tool on the market. That's exciting. 
Okay, so that's the Lindell 50 series. Now, let's pull up, and I'm going to pull up the base here so you can see that I've got the same settings. And we're going to do the, um, we're going to do a couple bars of no treatment whatsoever. Then we're going to do the same thing, unbypass all these. And we're going to hear the Neve 80 series, the Lindell 80 series in action. Here we go. Okay, the very, it, it's very different, right? The bottom end is, the bottom end on that is different than anything we've heard clearly, even though there's a lot of these tracks where the bottom end is not being processed, right? I mean, maybe we're just cutting low end or something, but the bottom end of the, of the bass drum and the bottom of the bass guitar are, are a unique, different animal than both other desks. And this, whereas the, the Neve, or I'm sorry, the, the 50 series, was really focused and, and punching us in the mouth at those frequencies where we had selected it. This is much more broad, but a lot more airy than the Helios was, right? So let's do that one more time on the 80 series. Hear the kick drum on that? Man, what, what, what a monster. Okay, what I want to do eventually for the grand finale is just bam, 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 all three consoles back to back, and we can really hear the differences, and all this terminology will make more sense. But I want to dive into just a couple specific items. Okay, we were talking about the, the, the kick and the snare wall goes. Let's just listen to all the drums. So what I want to do is, is we're going to solo um, the drum tracks only and listen to them completely raw on this section where I have all these toms playing. Okay, that's a that's a great drum sound, but let's see how greater this is. I'm gonna the one that you'll see on the screen is the overheads. I love that the bottom end is rich. We have more we have more you know um, brilliance. Let's call it on our back beats. They pop more but not overly pop. There's still, it's still a very big, warm analog sound. And, and the toms, I need to save that as a preset because whatever I dialed up is, is really working for me. So here's that same drum kit on a 50 series, which is API. Okay, so... API circuits are known to be fast, right? I mean, that, that's just one of the descriptions we get. And you can hear that. that see, the Helios was round. This is not round. This, this is jumping out of the speakers and biting us. And you can hear how, you know, 10K, uh, what are we boosting on the overheads? Uh, a lot. It's like 10 dB, 10 dB uh, at 10K. That's, that's a bunch, I know. But the whole idea is to just really hear the, the sonic uh, footprint of the circuits. And this guy is... is I mean, it's got a lot of high end, you know, the high end just really jumps. It's not that, that it's just high end, it's that it's jumpy high end. I'm really liking it, but it's lean where it needs to be lean, thinning out the, the areas where I'm, you know, uh, not trying to focus energy. So just a, a natural focus is the way I think of API a lot of times. Okay, that said, let's switch over to the overhead track for the um, drum kit on the 80 series. And here we go. So similar to me, to my ears, to the 69 in the sense that it's very rich, very thick, very round, but it in a completely different way. The, the sound of the high end on this versus the high end on the uh, 69 are completely different. So that, I mean, th that says a lot. You, you can mix and match these tools in ways where, okay, you want a little more top end, Let's go with the Neve because the Neve has a great, great airy top end. But it, if you also want that big size, you want a lot of high end, but not that 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 fluff and that puff and that size. You want a more compact, lean focus sound. Th then the 50 series is our guy. You want just all around analog, just 
like butter melting all down your body, you want the 69 because that's just, just ooey and gooey and just beautiful. So, wow. All right. So this is fun. I hope you, are you guys having fun? Cause I am having fun. So that said, let it, let us go to the, the guitar package. So we have an acoustic, a couple electrics, uh, an electric, um, slide lead, and then B3. And you'll see, uh, what I did, for example, on the B3 is I just cranked the harmonic distortion on each of the three consoles. Make sure, yep, all the way up, all the way up there. And got, remember, that's THD right here on the preamp section. So you want something to get extra gritty, drive that sucker, okay? So this is going to be the guitar package going through the Lindell 69, the Helios. Here we go. Okay, so these are not settings for the faint of heart. And that, that's one thing I want you to see about the, the 69 is you can get really aggressive with the, with the and, and may need to get really aggressive with the EQ because it, it's, it's not like a Neve, for example, or it's not like an SSL or something else where um, you can really make a lot of damage with just a few dB. Um, on this, you, it, because it's such a round, rich sound, you can really, really dig into it and probably need to dig into it more than you think to get some of the results you're looking for. But that, what's cool about that is the more aggressive you get with analog circuits, the more of the goodness you're pulling out of it, right? More flavor of that circuit, that circuit we, where we're really cranking uh, in into those through those that inductor circuit of the EQ and making a sonic footprint on it. So I actually really love on a, 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 an EQ knob that I have to just really just wham, you know, just to get to the top end I'm looking for. I personally love that because I know I'm getting a lot of flavor in addition to the frequency I'm looking for. Okay, so that sounded great, right? It's, it's it, again, round, rich, warm. Now let's bypass that. Now let's hear the same thing on the 50 series. Ready? Okay, it's not just that we have more upper mids and more attack. Listen to how they jump. Remember, we talk about API circuits being fast. And, and listen, listen to the attacks on the acoustic guitar, right? Okay, compared to what we heard on the Lindell uh, 69. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So we hear the attack, we hear the pick and attack, but we're softening it. Okay, so the question for us when we're mixing, do we want the attack of that particular instrument to jump in our face, or do we want to kind of mellow it out a little bit and, and tuck it down into the mix? Do we go 69 or do we go 50, right? Okay, now let's listen to that same thing on the 80 series. Here we go. Wow, the, 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 the high end of a Neve is just such a beautiful thing. Now that's way too much, of course, because like I said, the settings on all of these match the closest that we can. So what sounded natural and awesome on a Helios uh, at, with 6 dB at 10K on a Neve is way too much because that, that, that high frequency inductor EQ is, is just such a special thing on those Neves. And so a, a little bit goes a long way, um, but that's the, that's the sound of the, that's the sound of the circuit. And, um, but that's the fun. That's the fun of the circuit. Okay. What I want to do for the grand finale, because I think this is what everybody loved uh, last time is for me to shut up and let you <laughs> let you hear all the circuits back to back to back. So what we're going to start with, we're going to go 69. I'm going to listen to that for a little while. We're going to bypass it, go bam, right into the 50. And I'll try to keep the active one on the screen so you know for sure what you're listening to. Then we're going to bypass that and go right to 80 without me talking. Then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit to uh, to summarize everything. Okay, ready? Here we go.
that when you clicked on this video that you were waiting all this time for that don't weren't you i know you were i made you wait for this for the end but that said let, let's kind of summarize our thoughts well i can't summarize your thoughts i can summarize mine though mine is that the 69 is just very special round vintage warm all those all those things that seem like we overuse those words this is it but the thing is, it lives up to the hype. It really is all of those things. Um, I would have loved to take a shot at remixing this record with just that as my base. Because uh, it just, I mean, you, you they, they wanted swampy. Remember I mentioned that word earlier? That's This is swampy. I mean, it's just rich and gooey. All right, so that said, when I get up here to the 50, man, to me, it's just focus and fast. And the high end, I mean... This is the most, if you boost 10 dB of 10K, man, I mean, it's going to jump at you. So it's very fast, very punchy, but also very lean. Um, it's just something about this circuit. I, I've always told people a lot about when I use APIs, it, like on tracking days and, and things like that, is kind of my thinking um, versus other, you know, bigger, fluffier sounding preamps like a Neve or whatever, is that the I can add up a bunch of APIs and they hold hands nice because they sound focused. That was really on display here. I mean, it, it, where it's not, where I'm not telling an instrument to pop out, it's not popping it out. It's it, it's just kind of setting it down in the mix nicely. But where I tell it to jump, man, it is saying how high and and double it, and doubling it. And finally, for the AD, just all time greatness, right? I mean, you hear this and you just realize why these circuits are so prized still to this day. Uh, the bottom end is special, uh, the high end is special, but still round. You know, that transformer that is just doing its thing in the background and making everything just, just smooth and buttery and, and just beautiful. So I, I love all three of them. But what I'd really like to do is log on to YouTube the next couple of days and see comments from you guys below telling me where you have found in your own mixing, you know, kind of where do you where do you park some of these guys in your template, right? Do you use this on acoustic? Do you use this on drums? Do you use this on a lead vocal? Whatever the case may be, I would kind of like to know your thinking. Um, if if some of my terminology is different than what you're hearing. Tell me below. It's okay if we hear different things and interpret it a different way. I think that's, a, that's one of the most amazing things about this stuff is that we're all unique, and at the end of the day, we can use the same tools and come out with a completely different mix. So if you will, just jump on below. Let me know your thoughts. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. But if you are a Mega Bundle owner and you haven't yet, man, I, can't, I cannot tell you or urge you fast enough, run and update your subscription uh, to, and grab this guy because it is fun and beautiful sounding and all three of them are all three of them are but uh you know the 50 and the 80 have been out for a little bit longer so um that said happy mixing